Good morning, my friends, and welcome to day 68 of the guide. And, um, well, welcome to the next banger of an episode. Today's episode is all about villages, villages, and even a little villagers. Today, we'll be setting out in our world, exploring a little bit more, and talking specifically the best way to find a village in your world. Sincerely and deeply, I hope you enjoy this episode as much as I've been enjoying making them. So today, we kick things off with a little bit of a base tour. A lot has changed. We got a new farm. We got a new farm. We got a camelot. <clears throat> camelot. I always said camelot. We got a chicken. And we got oh, the mighty titan. But of course, of course, you would never miss an episode of the series. No, 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 no. That would be the worst. You recognize all of this stuff. The big reason I wanted to kick off today's episode is over here. The cow extraordinaire 3000. Oh, it's ready to go. To use the cow crusher, I said I'd talk about it. We're gonna feed wheat to both of the cows. They're gonna look at each other somehow, really closely. And then we get a brand new baby. In order to get that cow farm up and running, we're gonna have to give it a little bit of time. Now, thankfully, I think every single one of these farms is close enough to world spawn in this world, which means they'll actually be loaded in the whole time, even when I'm not at the base. Villages, villages, smillages, smillages. Today, we're going to go out into our great big blue wonderful world and find some villages. I don't exactly know where this journey is going to send us, but we'll bring the map just in case. And then actually, I think we're going to bring the supplies to make a new map, too. One thing that I would like to try and be a, a little bit better about inside of this world here is mapping out what I've explored, what I've done, and what I've seen. It'll help us tell a story in the end. Aww. Not technically necessary, but consider bringing a map. Also, definitely, maybe technically necessary, not at all, is a spyglass. That's going to come in handy big time, too. To conserve on a little bit of inventory space right now, we can prime up our next map, but definitely not open the map yet. As soon as we open the map, it's loaded in, and we already have this one. I'm sure somewhere out in the wild, we'll be able to find more sugarcane for extra paper, so I'm not really worried about it. A map, a spyglass, the very final thing that we're going to need to have on hand before we explore is, of course, that brand new Berry Merch collection. No, oh, it's on now. The Berry Merch is the very first new Waddles merch drop that has dropped in like over a year at least. If you're a fan of me, this series, or just Sweet Berries in general, and you want summer vibes, check it out. Link down below. Anyways, finally, we need some extra food. I don't know how long we'll be gone. Next stop is over to our most trusty steed, and by steed, I mean boat. And so now we're off. Flashback rewind. If currently you feel like you're having visions, you may be hallucinating a little bit. Well then medically, I think you should go get that checked out. That sounds bad. You're not in a daze, a haze or any kind of dream. Earlier on inside of this world, we have found not one, but actually two villages. Today we're gonna up the difficulty a little bit and set a goal of finding at least one more village by the end of the episode. With the help of you, my dear friend, by tapping like on this video right here, you'll not only let me know that you're enjoying the series, but you'll also let YouTube know that the series is pretty all right, at least, and it should recommend it to more people. But additionally, by tapping like on this video, you'll help me find not only all the other supplies that we're looking for while exploring today, but you'll also help me find one extra brand new village that we've never seen before. So when it comes to villages and trying to locate one for the very first time in your world, there is one specific spot that we should start. And by one specific spot, I mean like eight spots. For the absolute basics, a village inside of Minecraft, <laughs> if you if you happen to be watching this video and have absolutely no clue at all as to what a village actually is, well, a village in Minecraft is a specific type of structure, or in other words, essentially a cluster of buildings that you'll find generating in around your Minecraft world. Every single Minecraft world is different. Villages are gonna be located in different spots, but they'll always be located in the same spots. Hey, yo, 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 by the way, I've seen a couple questions about it. In this series, when I flip over to a different world and I'm flying around all of a sudden, it's never the same world. I have a bunch of extra random worlds that I keep making. <laughs> my, my folder is filling up. To find a village inside of your world, it's good to start by knowing the absolute basics. In Minecraft, there are biomes. These biomes have different characteristics. This is a birch forest biome. I hate him. It's terrible. If I was looking for a village, it would 100% not be a very smart idea to go over to my local ocean and swim around and get angry and not only get angry but inevitably my rage grows and grows and grows i take monster pour it all over my razor keyboard and it gets really sticky and messy and sparks start flying out then i get angry smash the monitor then maybe i would like give my cat or something and have the cat bite the monitor because i'm really angry about it all and yeah yeah basically just like destroy things that's not a great idea <clears throat> instead what i'm saying here is it's much smarter to look in the specific biomes that villages can actually generate in specific biomes that villages can generate in nowadays we've got a lot of different options the default biome kind of like the most basic one is going to be the plains biome 
You could also find a village inside of a desert biome, inside of the taiga biome, the snowy tundra biome, the savanna, and the meadow biome too. Now every single time you find a plains biome, you're not 100% guaranteed a village. Like, sometimes it just doesn't happen. But you're way more likely to find a village inside of a plains or a meadow biome than you are inside of a forest biome. Because that would be literally impossible. Back inside of our world, oh boy, do you know what's next? <laughs> <laughs> Think back to the beginning of the episode. Oh, <laughs> I'm so excited. I'm so happy. Brand new day, same old village. Now, when it comes to our different village types, say Plains Village, Desert Village, they're different, but they're also the same. Well, I, uh, I guess this episode is an entire contradiction in itself. The Plains Village, the Desert Village, they definitely look different, but like functionally, they're basically exactly the same. You might find different structures, or in fact, you'll definitely find different structures, but you will always find, or 90% of the time, you'll find a same old, a big nose, wonderful being. They may be dressed in different drip, but they are still the same old, wonderful, big nose, questioning beings. Now let's rewind a little bit, because in today's journey, I'm trying to set us up nice and perfectly for something that I like to do next, which is upgrade my tools with magical enchantments. To upgrade the tools with those magical enchantments, I'm gonna need a little bit of books. <laughs> the ethics and morals of finding a village and taking everything from it, including villagers. Class, we will avoid that topic today. All that I know is I need to look out for a couple different things on our exploration trip today. But once we find more villages, I need to find bookshelves inside of those villages and maybe even eradicate the cows nearby. So village, sweet village number one. I just wanna take a quick poke around this place and just see, maybe we have a couple more books, but I, I kinda doubt it. I feel like the village's local library was over there and the rest of this place is just gonna be smaller houses. Beautiful, quite quaint, but definitely not full of knowledge and books. An extra map though. Haha, <laughs> I'll take that. And hey, you know what? Actually, speaking of maps, I kind of completely forgot about it. All this information has gotten me completely off of that map. Yeah, I, I kind of figured. To kick off your village journey in your world, begin by locating one of the biomes in which a village could actually spawn. After that, if you've got any kind of high, ooh, a high, precious, valuable vantage point, climb up to that vantage point and with a spyglass, look around. If your render distance isn't already raised for this process, I recommend bearing with the lag a little bit and raising it up. A little render distance life hack for you? If you're lagging out, try lowering your simulation distance a little bit. That should make things run smoother while still letting you see far. With our render distance raised from this high vantage point, hopefully near the biome that you're looking for, you might be able to use a spyglass, scan around inside of the biome like I did in episode 2, and actually locate a village just like that. If you're having a hard time locating the right biomes in the first place though, then it's still up to a high vantage point. Up at a high spot like this right here, I can now clearly see that, oh my god, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't plan on that, it's not scripted, the series is like, it's not script, um, <laughs> okay, well, that's our next village. Um, <laughs> nice. Just like I did right there, you find a high vantage point. What I was going to say is now I can clearly see there's a new plains biome off in the distance over there. That would then be able to carefully and slowly make my way over to the plains biome and <laughs> scan it on foot, look around for a village. Oh, oh, ooh, don't look at that thing. All right, now next up, before we head over to that village and check that thing out, we're going to go back over to Home Sweet Home and <laughs> look at this thing. I mean, obviously, you can see the cherry trees. That sticks out a lot, but you can see the base of the nether sword portal, too. Oh, that's awesome. This is a survival series, which means we're talking all about how to find a village in survival. There is technically an easier way, but this is 100% cheating. Built into Minecraft to Java and Bedrock Edition, there are a whole lot of wonderful commands. There are some differences between the commands of both versions of the game, but one common thing is the fact that many of these commands are locked behind creative mode. In 100% survival, if you're looking for a village, you cannot use the locate structure command. But in creative, if you want to find a village really quick, use this command and say, locate village desert, run the command, give it a second, and poof, just like that, you got your local village found. This command is a really, really useful command for finding villages, but uh, obviously maybe not ideal for your world. This village right here that we just found is a desert village. Like I mentioned earlier, each village is the same in the sense that it has buildings and villagers, but the blocks that make up the buildings are very different, and sometimes the things found inside of a village, they're going to be different too. Like we found out earlier on in the series, we find Camel at the desert village. Back over at home sweet home, now that we're on our original map, I can actually remember to like stop as soon as I move off of this map and make a new one. Oh, whoa, and actually, check this out. It looks like as soon as I cross the river over here and go to, like, the the sweet berry thing, I'm off the map. Brand new map with sweet berry farm. Oh, it's cool. And then we'll go ahead and zoom this map out all the way real quick. 
Every single village generates a little bit differently. One thing that will make the Taiga village potentially a whole lot easier to find is the campfire smoke. Depending on how your world actually generated here, if you have a Taiga biome, you could be in luck. Not only is the Taiga biome a biome that could potentially have a village inside of it, but if you can get high enough up inside of a Taiga biome, using a spyglass again, we can look around for campfire smoke. Inside of the... My luck is insane. My luck is literally insane. Okay. All right. <laughs> inside of the taiga biome campfires will generate and usually the campfires are out in the open that means you're gonna have smoke rising from the campfire going high up into the air i want that low campfires are kind of like a dead giveaway a great way to find a village inside of a taiga biome i'm sailing down the river and then i see campfire smoke popping up past the trees like it usually does <laughs> well if i was sailing around and oh my gosh Oh my gosh! Finally! I found it! There, there's a fox, it's beautiful. No, don't hurt the fox! No, dog, no! I have no option, it's a race against the clock. Don't hurt the fox, poor dog. It was you, wasn't it? You, stop! No, no, you're. You're my friend. You're my sweet friend. <laughs> Not only did I save a fox's life today, but you're my friend. Bonzo. Bonzo, I love you. Bonzo, you come with me. We're fighting a village. Bonzo, come over here. Come over here. Follow me. We go for a swim. Uh, listen, I need you to get into the Cadillac. The Ferrari. The Ferrari. You get into the Ferrari with me. You stay in the boat, Bonzo. Just when I thought this day wouldn't get any more beautiful, it gets uh, five times more beautiful. I was trying to say. <clears throat> Anyways, I was trying to say before this dog so rudely interrupted me. If you're sailing, say, down a river or moving around inside of a taiga biome and you see campfire smoke billowing above the trees like it usually does, well, once you spot that campfire smoke, it's a sure sign that you've got a village nearby, my friend. Bones, oh, wait there. Campfire smoke, campfire smoke. I know for sure. I saw what I definitely saw from up high in that pillar. Hmm. Over here, we got a swamp biome, and I remember what was past the swamp biome, a plains biome. But where is that other thing that I saw? From the distance where is that other thing ha uh, <laughs> you thought you could hide from me that other thing with the campfire smoke rising up a village start by locating the biomes that could actually have a village after that get up high and using a spyglass and higher render distance look around if you're in a biome that tends to be relatively open you might not even have to get up high say a savanna biome a desert biome or maybe a plains if you're in a crowded biome, like say the taiga biome, tower up past the trees and using your spyglass, look for campfire smoke or unnatural blocks, like the things that are making up the buildings here. Spruce house, spruce house, you got bookshelves in here. Oh, you got bookshelves in here. In total, to pull off enchanting magic that I want to pull off, we need like 45 books. I think I have five back at home and now I'm a proud owner of 18. <laughs> I'm halfway there. Now, now that we have bowed all of this insane village luck, I think we're kind of like good for today when it comes to... Ooh, Ooh, iron chest plate for free, for free. So when it comes to finding a village, I got the craziest luck. But how about what's actually inside of a village? So each biome that a village can generate in, aside from the meadow biome, has its own type of village. Meaning like the village is built out of different blocks. Usually the blocks and the loot kind of tie in with the surrounding of the village. For example, obviously this is the taiga village, so we're going to have spruce trees all around. The village is built out of spruce. Even more so though, every single biome has its own unique type of diamond. Oh, it's beautiful. And iron too, can't forget that. Yeah, you're all coming back home with me. Beautiful. Each biome has its own type of village, but then there are two types of village within that. Sometimes if you're unlucky or lucky. Depending on how things go, you'll be able to find an abandoned village. An abandoned village is basically characterized with zombified villagers and ruined buildings. It's quite scary. Our village is not ruined, so we got beautiful villagers all over the place. Now, villagers are a very complex topic. Originally, I was going to talk all about these guys in this episode, but hey, I, I feel like they're more important than that. They should get their own episodes. For our absolute basics of villagers today, these are villagers. They have cool-looking outfits on. Their outfits correspond to their jobs. The pirate over there, I think it works at, like, the grindstone, the workstation. The farmer hat over there, it works at the composter. Now, farmers are one of the most advanced type of villager, but every single villager kind of works the same. If you interact with a villager when it has a job, you get trades. If I had 15 coal, well, then I could sell the coal for one emerald. Terrible idea. If I had 11 emeralds, I could buy this sword right there. Absolutely terrible idea. Now, at nighttime, kind of like this guy just did right there, it's going to wander off to its home. There's kind of a lot to a villager's home location, but long story short, it's basically where its bed is. The villager goes inside at nighttime and sleeps in a bed. Unless I kick it out and I sleep there. 
once you sleep through the nighttime, something you should definitely do near a village because zombies hate these guys. Eventually, they're going to wake up and go back to work. Now, villagers have a very complex day schedule with time built into the day for gossiping, time built into the day for walking, and time built into the day for working. Although that's a little advanced for this episode, though, so we'll come back to it later. Now, uh, this village right here, it's a taiga village, but it kind of spills over into the swamp biome. So as we can see here, we kind of have a swamp village, but not really. It is technically possible for villages to pop up into biomes they shouldn't pop up into, but that is only going to happen if the village generates in a biome and the other biome is like right next door to it. All over the village, you'll find buildings, and then typically inside of the building, sometimes outside, you'll find blocks called workstations. There are a lot of different blocks that fall under the workstation category. All of them control the villager's profession and the day-night cycle a little bit. If I place this down next to a villager, that villager will become whatever job it gets when it, when it works at a cauldron. I don't remember. When you eventually find a village like me, one of the best things to do is check every single building because that's where the loot is usually gonna be. Oh my gosh, diamonds, diamonds, and diamonds. I got three diamonds today. Two brand new villages I didn't plan on and three wonderful diamonds. Yeah, villages are great. They got a lot of nice loot, including diamonds. Well, 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 a dog and cat bin. Two cats trapped with a dog friend. Oh, I wish I had, uh, I wish I had, like, fish. Maybe we would do fishing episode, but if I had fish, I, I would tame all of you right now. You better believe it. I would name you Peony. I would name you Cash because you look like my cat, Cash. Oh, it's wonderful. We'll come back. Uh, actually, you know what? Matter of fact, we will come back. I'll just block them in like that. They should stay there forever. They're trapped. So all over a village, you got buildings, cool things inside of the buildings and villagers all over the place. Another key point of the village is the village center. A village center is typically marked by a bell. Here we've got a bell in the middle, an uncraftable item that you should definitely consider a borrowing from the village if you want. The center point of every village is significant during a day night cycle, but also during a raid. Another thing we'll talk about later. All right, so after this village right here building, I think we've checked out just about every single building in the town. I got all the loot that I needed. I found the village. Honestly, villages, villagers as a whole, all of it is so complex. Like, there's so much to it. But there is one more thing I like to touch on today. And that's that other village somewhere over there. And that beautiful thing, too. Well, 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 my, 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 what do we have here? The contraption, a strange construction, a strange being that somebody was being, doing, in a past bygone era. And a village over there. Mm -hmm. This is quite peculiar and very strange. It almost looks as if somebody was watching the Nether Portal episode of the series and tried to construct it inside of my world. Only they got it a little bit wrong. So this structure is one of the most common structures in Minecraft. It's the Ruin Portal. This thing can generate in almost every single biome in the entire game. At every single Ruin Portal structure, you're going to find a lot of obsidian. Some very interesting crying obsidian block and loot. Unfortunately, that time, when it comes to loot, I didn't get too hot here. I got a sword, I got some boots, and a little bit of iron. But I mean, after all, I can't complain. Loot is loot. Free extra loot. Sometimes a golden apple or something crazy from it. Yeah, 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 it's great. When exploring your world, maybe searching for a village, a ruined portal is an amazing thing to keep your eyes out for. Careful, though. There's lava around them. It'll cause fire. And so, as we slowly move through this swamp biome right over here, very interesting. I wonder if we have a witch hunt near spawn too. It definitely feels like with the luck that I'm having in this world, <laughs> a witch hunt over at spawn is not out of the question at all. But, but anyways, as I slowly move through the swamp here, we're going to walk ourselves into what I think is another plains biome village. See, every village and every biome has its own unique aesthetic other than the meadow village. The meadow village, which is definitely not what this is, is just a copy of the plains biome village. It's actually pretty lame. Like, I talk about it quite a bit, and I never understand it. It just blows my mind that the devs spend a whole update focused on revamping the villages, making them even better and fresher. Then, like, literally four updates later, only a couple years, ah, uh, they come back in and slap another village in and don't even care to make it special or unique. It makes no sense. Anyways, inside of this village, we're gonna find even more cool workstations, but I, I think we'll just go ahead and let the villagers keep doing their thing. I don't really need all the workstations. Specifically and specifically here, I'm looking for books, books, books. Uh, any librarian villagers around here want to show me the way to the local library? Ah, ha, ha. I got a big one too with a balcony inside. Oh, this should push us over the top. That's three, that's three, that's three, that's three. That's 12 right there. This is 24 total, plus whatever I had in my inventory. Oh, 42, I could definitely find myself a couple pieces of leather. Ah, it's time to enchant. And you know what? While we're at it, I think I will go ahead and borrow one lectern. I feel like I could add that to the enchanting setup and make a cool aesthetic. One of my favorite flowers in the game is found in the swamp. Complete side note, but this thing is beautiful. I want you for back at home too. Maybe three. 
And so as nighttime begins to encroach in on this village, with the villagers running around panicking, running quickly back to their houses, I should make their life a little bit more enjoyable. We sleep. Every time we find a village, you sleep. Now this village actually here that we found over in a plains biome, swamp biome, whatever, it's like very sprawling. This is a really, really big village. Sometimes, depending on how a village generates, it can get a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller. Little village pro tip, life hack for you here. If you find a village early game, these hay bales are absolutely overpowered. Bread is a really, hey, well, it's not a bad option early game. If you take the hay bales and generate all over and break them down, it's nine wheat per hay bale. That's gonna be three pieces of bread per hay bale. Hay bales are also pretty nice looking. Like, I mean, we could take these and decorate these back over at the base to make it feel a little bit more lived in. They're cool and they're all mine. Once you find a village, all over the thing, you'll find buildings. Usually inside of the buildings, you'll find beds for the villagers and maybe chests and workstations too. Somewhere inside of your village, typically a little bit closer to the center of all the buildings, you'll find the center spot, usually with a bell generated. If you ring the bell, the villagers will panic and actually run back into their houses or walk. Connecting all of the houses, you will find paths to try and generate. Now, sometimes, depending on a terrain, the paths can get a little bit broken here, but the paths kind of lead you around the village. Inside of a village, sometimes, you'll even be able to find enclosed animal enclosures with animals inside of it. And finally, in one of the most beautiful things you can find inside of a village, because of the mechanics of villagers, everything like that, you're also able to find cats inside of the village. Now, today, we won't really be taming a cat. I think one pet at a time is probably good enough for us, but cats. No, oh, well, 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 uh, hopping around a swamp over here. I mean, logically, it wouldn't make sense we have a swamp. Oh, the frog, the frog. I love these things. They're so cool. Oh, man, if I brought a lead or like slime ball, I don't have them. But if I brought a lead, I would have been bringing you back home too. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, that's great. Now, while I slowly make my way back over to Bonezo, I'd like to tackle today's comment of the day. If you remember, in the last episode, I asked you guys what you thought I should do about the dragon fight. For today's comment of the day, instead of picking just one comment, I like to pick all of the comments that address the question. So, thank you, everybody. <laughs> After seeing all the feedback, well, I'm nothing short of enlightened. I think the new plan is going to be still try and take on the dragon by episode 25, but if it doesn't happen because we want to check out the new stuff, it's no big deal. My plan here is to just go with it. If we feel like taking on the new stuff, we'll do it, but otherwise, we'll try and get the dragon done, dusted, and out of the way. After all, it's uh, <laughs> not like the dragon fight actually changes much anyways. Also, I'd like to take the dragon on so then we could like move to a new spot. It's not that I don't love this spot and what we have going for us over here. It's actually the opposite. It's just that I feel that we can find it even more inspiring and maybe cherry filled spot to build. So anyways, let me know what you think about that. And finally, our final village hunting tip of the day. Oh my. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Is that a... Is that a condition? Bonzo, my dear friend, we just met and you're not feeling too well. You're scooting all over the brown, the ground, leaving, leaving brown. Um, what? <laughs> Stop scooting everywhere. No, not inside. Don't do that in the house. The final wonderful village finding tip of the day that I have for you involves this beautiful place called Chunk Base. Chunk Base is an amazing Minecraft to database, essentially, where you can take a look at your world. On Chunk Base, and I'll drop a link to it down in the description, we got a villager finder. Using the seed of your world, whatever it is, you can put it in right here, select your version, Java or Bedrock even, and then you get a map of your world with dots all over it. These dots are going to correspond to where Chunkface thinks the village is. From my testing, I find that this thing is accurate, like 95% of the time. In my opinion, using Chunkface to find things is a nice cross between using commands and wandering around aimlessly inside of your world. It's not up to me to tell you if it's cheating or not, you make your own decision on that. But it is up to me to tell you that we got 47 books. Oh, it's beautiful. 47 books, a brand new doorbell for the house. A couple of villages found, but most importantly, a brand new friend. Everybody, meet Bones up. And so those are my tips for finding a village. If you got another amazing tip, drop that down in the comments below. Smash like on the episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Today, big thank you to my patrons, Archangel, Gron Crazy May, Medical, Boomstick, Swoopy Louvers, Noodle Pork, and Bill W. You're the best. It's been me, Waddles, and I will see you all tomorrow. Goodbye.